Chapter 9 AC Capacitance The objectives of this chapter are to determine capacitance response in the time domain to both pulsed and sinusoidal sources, and to introduce a major troubleshooting feature of capture. If inductance is the opposition to changing current, then capacitance is the opposition to changing voltage. This is accomplished by storing charge and energy when the voltage goes up and releasing charge and energy when the voltage goes down. If the relationship between applied voltage V and stored charge Q is linear, then the defining equation is shown below, where C, which is the capacitance, is the constant of proportionality. If we take the time rate of change of both sides and replace the derivative of Q divided by derivative of T by I, the current, we generate the derivative form of this fundamental relationship. In other words, the current flow to or from the capacitor at any instant of time equals the rate of change of voltage across the capacitor. The voltage magnitude does not matter. Capacitance results from the separation of two pieces of conductor material. To maximize capacitance, the conductors are usually thin, flat conductive plates placed very close together. Such a circuit element is known as a capacitor. When a voltage is applied to the capacitor, charge is removed from one plate and deposited on another. This charge separation results in an electric field between the plates. If one volt is applied across a capacitor of one farad, then it stores one coulomb of charge. Or using the second relationship, if the voltage across a one farad capacitor changes at a rate of one volt per second, then one amp of current flows into or out of the capacitor. Most capacitors found in typical circuits are in the picofarad to microfarad range. When capacitors are combined in series and parallel, the resulting capacitance follows the opposite pattern for resistors and inductors. This is shown below in the two equations. As with the differential equation that governs inductors, its capacitive counterpart is also universal in nature and valid for all kinds of time varying waveforms. Again, following the lead of the inductor, when a capacitor circuit is limited to sine wave sources, the differential equation becomes an algebraic equation. When the applied voltage is a sine wave, then the resulting current is another sine wave that leads the voltage by 90 degrees. Remember, with an inductor, the voltage leads the current. From the previous set of equations, we also extract a second most useful relationship that follows Ohm's law. For sinusoidal waveforms, the peak voltage across a capacitor divided by the peak current is equal to 1 over 2 pi times f times c. This term, which varies inversely with frequency, has units of ohms and is called capacitive reactance. As with inductive reactance, we can say that capacitive reactance is an operator. When the current phaser is operated upon by the capacitive reactance operator, the resulting voltage phaser is changed in magnitude by 1 over 2 pi ft and rotated backwards by 90 degrees. The phaser graphs below compare the inductive and capacitive phaser relationships. For the first circuit in chapter 9, we will go over a simple series capacitor circuit with the voltage pulse source and a capacitor in series with it. We'll hook it up just like it's being shown here and change our value of our capacitor to 1 microfarad. 
Now we set our source voltages with the times 0 microseconds milliseconds to 3 milliseconds. And our voltage is V1, 0 volts, V2, 1 volt, V3, 1 volt, and V4, 0 volts. And close out of the properties window. And add our ground. Now we're ready to set off our simulation profile. We want to run this to 3 milliseconds with a step size of 3 microseconds. Click apply and OK and then hit the blue triangle for the running of the circuit. And wait for the simulation window to pop up. And now we can select our traces. But before we do that, we just want to add another plot window and select our first trace. Which is V1 plus. It's the positive relationship. And in our other plot window, we want the negative current of the capacitor C1. From here we can determine the relationship between the two seeing the rise and the hold and then the decreasing voltage corresponding to the currents as well. In our second circuit we will change the pulsed voltage source to a sine wave voltage source V sine. We will change the values to V off is and now we want to change our simulation profile, run time two milliseconds and step size of 2 microseconds. And run the circuit. And from this set of waveforms we'll be able to see the same relationship just with a different source the sine wave source. So we'll see sine wave waveforms like the one shown here for our voltage from 5 volts to negative 5 volts, the swing and adding another plot we add in our negative relationship of the current and the capacitor and we can see this is off phase by 90 degrees and running in the same sinusoidal relationship as the voltage. One last aspect presented in this chapter is a troubleshooting tip. From the simulation analysis, you can see there's no errors in this diagram. However, a common error is to leave out the ground. When you leave out the ground and run the circuit, a very defined error will show up. This will state that there are nodes floating. This means the circuit is not finished and does not have a zero reference point.
So in correcting this, all you need to do is add that ground back in. And that is chapter 9.